We're with legendary Purdue University coach Gene Cady, who joins us today from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Coach, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, it's great to see you, and I appreciate you having me on. You bet. So today we want to go ahead and talk about Bob Knight. And so many people here in the state of Indiana know about the rivalry between IU and Purdue, but many people did not know that the two of you were friends. Can you tell us a little bit about how that relationship grew from on the court uh, combatants, if you will, as coaches, to friends? Well, it all started when I was Eddie Sutton's assistant at Arkansas. He wanted to watch one of Bobby's practices. So we flew from Arkansas to Bloomington and watched him practice. And that's when I first met him, when I was uh, Eddie Sutton's assistant. So he, our, our friendship then grew, and I became the coach of Purdue. And, and he's just a guy I highly respected. And, and uh, he was someone we knew was always going to do the right thing. He's maybe the greatest coach of all time, I think, anyway. So, so it's, that's, the way it, that's how it grew. So we saw the two of you uh, during these great Purdue IU basketball games over so many seasons. But I think what we are interested in learning is the depth of the friendship that existed between these two coaches at these two schools. And so I'm wondering if you can tell me off the court, what did you and Bob Knight used to do together? And what kind of a relationship did you have when you weren't playing each other? Well, I think we played golf a couple times together, but that's about it. He was always busy recruiting, so was I, or doing something for his program. So we weren't together that much because we had our own programs to worry about. But uh, we became friends because I highly respected him. And he was one of those guys that I knew didn't cheat. Uh, he was a great, maybe the greatest coach of all time, as I said. And I just think he's one of those guys that I just love playing against because I knew he was going to do things right. Who was the better? Him, who was the I better was, golfer I love coach? Playing again. Pardon? Who was the better golfer coach? I don't know. I I, I think everybody's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So was there one game in the history of the Gene Cady Bob Knight era that stands out as the one the the biggest game that you are going to remember? Uh, you know, for the rest of your life. Oh gosh, that's a good question. I don't, I don't remember all those years, but I was, I've been here 25, 25 years, so we played 25 times or more, maybe even the tournament once. So, uh, I know we beat them over there one time in the last second shot. That was probably the highlight. And I don't even know what, what uh, year that was because we, I knew we were going to have a happy ride home. And of course, many people know when Bob Knight threw the chair. That was during an IU Purdue game. What did you think when that happened? Well, I we must have been doing something good if we needed to get that fired up. So uh, I didn't think much about it. That's just the way it was. I, I knew the referees would handle it, so we were okay. It didn't bother me, and I just just uh, tried to move on from it. Once the both of you retired, what was the relationship like at that point? Did you hang out together? Did you go to restaurants? We know that you did uh, speeches together. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Well, he was always fun to listen to because he uh, had a great sense of humor, had great knowledge to give to other people. Uh, he was a guy that you wanted to be around because you always learn from him. What is something about Bob Knight that you know that most people don't know? Uh, he's very generous. Uh, he's a guy that cares about his players uh, deeply, and uh, he respects, I think, all coaches if, uh, if they don't keep which I'm the same way. And uh, it's one of those things where he just was a great guy to be around because he had a great sense of humor. And of course, I mean, you I were... thought that when you watched him, but he did. Right. Now, you were in Bloomington when Bob Knight came back to Assembly Hall. We know what that felt like for IU fans, but what was that moment like for you? I'm not understanding what you mean when he came back to Assembly Hall. Yeah, so, uh, you know, back in 2020, when he had been gone oh, from IU back. for so okay. long, right, and uh, he, came, he comes back, what, what was that like for you to see the reception that Bob Knight got after so many years of not being at IU? Well, I, I was glad I had a great coach back in the realm of things, but I was sad because I knew he might lose. <laughs> so I was happy to see him, and we always had, we had, always had cordial visits, and or, and we had a lot of, and um, we like both like baseball. We both like golf, and 
and we both liked winning. So it was one of those things where we had a few mutual interests. Did, did you tease each other? Was there any trash talk in between uh, games or rivalries or at the end of, you know, if you won one or if he won one, would there be any phone calls or any, any, uh, any funny comments that, that either one of you would make back and forth? I don't forth? remember any, but you watched his play, didn't you? Yes. I don't think there's anything funny going on. So it was one of those things where everything is very serious for both of us because we both wanted to win a Big Ten game. And were there players that got away from you or players that you were able to recruit away from Bob Knight that you would talk about in later years? No, we didn't do that. I, I, he, was a, he was a gentleman and a guy that didn't do those sort of things. That, that wouldn't be professional. Mm. Hey, what about in the last year, uh, Coach? How often did you talk to Bob? What did you know about his health? And what kinds of conversations did you have together? We, we talked about once a week because once I heard about his health, I wanted to talk to him and see what was going on. I first met him, maybe I already told you this, when I was Eddie Sons' assistant at Arkansas. And I went through and watched him practice once, and I was very impressed with how he handled practice. So uh, just, a, just a great guy, I thought, because he was what I thought a coach should be like. Mm. Uh, let me talk to you about the uh, Boilermakers this year. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of attention based on Zach Eady coming back and, and the Boilers uh, getting back to the, uh, to the dance. What do you think about the, uh, the Purdue basketball team this year? Well, they're all, as long as Matt Painter's coaching, they'll be okay. Uh, with a, they got a big center inside. And that was, that's what you need in the Big Ten to win. So he'll be, he'll be okay, I believe. But you never know. Basketball is kind of fickle, you know. It doesn't always go like you want it to. How often will we see you in West Lafayette at basketball games? Well, every time I, every time they play, I hope my wife lets me. If we get a flight. <laughs> and l let me just talk to you about your career. I mean, you know, you've had so much success in West Lafayette. So many great players uh, you have coached. If you had to start a starting five of Gene Cady players, who would be in that starting position of all the great players that came through Purdue? Oh, wow, you put me in a big spot. Of course, Glenn Robinson, you had to start with him. And uh, Kip Jones and have uh, Tony Jones and uh, Jones boys and uh, uh, we, Greg Eifert. And uh, I, I could name probably 20, but I don't want to leave anybody out. So I don't want to get into that, please. <laughs> okay, I understand. And when you look back at your own career, Coach, what's the signature moment that you had in your career? I think when I got the Purdue job, Went from Western Kentucky was a great job for me, and uh, coached. I coached at three places that were really great. Hutch Juco is where I started in college. Coached at Boyd High School, then Hutch Juco. Hutch Juco averaged 8,000 people a game, and that's more than most major league, major, uh, major teams do. And then I got the job at Western Kentucky, which I thought was a great because they had great tradition, still do. And then I got the Purdue job, which was uh, to me was unbelievable because Purdue is so famous with their tradition and people that Rick Mount had played there and people like that. So it was a, it was an easy, uh, easy answer to say yes. And what was the, the, the signature moment at Purdue? What was your, the biggest game that you ever won, your proudest accomplishment there? Oh, wow. I don't know. That's a good, I, we had a lot of wins that uh, I was very proud of. Uh, anytime you won on the road in the Big Ten, it was a happy ride home. It was good. So, uh, you know, I think anytime you can beat your rival, that's good. As far as the alumni was concerned, not necessarily what I thought, but the alumni you, you were trying to please, of course. But uh, I can't remember one game that stands out. Other than the, we won, I think we beat Fresno State in the NCAA once, and that was a pretty big upset. So uh, that's that's about as far back as I can go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And a couple of more questions, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. I think when you lose a friend, when you've lost somebody like Bob Knight, do you think about your own mortality? Do you think about how folks might remember you, Coach? Well, I think about dying. You mean, and I don't want to be uh, part of any of that it's nonsense. But uh, yeah, I think about those things. I, I, I just want to make sure that that uh, Coach Knight's family is okay first, and uh, then, and I know they will be. And I think that uh, it, you just you just try to do your own thing and and take care of your own family first and make sure everybody's okay. And coach, how do you want to be remembered? As someone that graduated their players, that was number one, and somebody that taught basketball the right way, 
and did, and someone that did not cheat, got the players the right way. And uh, those three things are very important to me. And anything else that I've not asked you about Coach Knight, what he meant to you? Maybe you could sum it up that way. Well, he, I, he to me, I don't know if he thought this or not, but I, he was a good friend of mine, I think, because the very fact he even talked to me, I was uh, uh, blessed with, because he was a guy that I looked up to always when I was coaching Hutch and Western and someone that I watched his whole career and tried to follow some of the things he did uh, philosophy-wise, played man-to-man defense, ran a passing game, and uh, he, he was just he's just a special person in our coaching world that will maybe never see one like him again. Coach Gene Katie, we so appreciate the time. Uh, my best to you and your family, and uh, boiler up. Well, thank you very much, and I'm glad we got to talk about Bobby because he was a person that I highly respected and loved and hoped that his family's fine now, and I'm sure they will be. Yes, it's great to see you, great to talk to you. Thanks, th- thanks again so much for your time today. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. All right, Coach, we'll see you soon.